Hey guys, welcome back to part 6 of the broadcast receiver tutorial. So now we learned about pretty much all the different ways we can send and receive broadcasts, either statically or dynamically, explicit or implicit. If these terms still confuse you, please watch from part 1 again. Now it's time to talk about security measures, because as we saw in the previous videos, it's pretty easy to send and receive broadcasts between different apps. This also means that malicious apps could theoretically receive and intercept our broadcasts, read the data we are sending or trigger our own receivers when we don't want it. And we have two main ways how we can avoid this. We can limit the scope of apps and components that are allowed to receive our broadcasts or send broadcasts to our app. And secondly, we can specify permissions that the sending or receiving app has to hold in order to communicate with our app. We already learned about ways to limit the scope of our broadcasts and receivers in the previous parts, so let's quickly recap this. So the most insecure way of sending a broadcast is by just specifying an intent action string and nothing else. Because what keeps other apps from registering for the same action? Everyone who knows the string can register for this broadcast and read our data. Because of the Android Oreo background execution limits, at least apps can't listen for this intent with static receivers anymore, and only if they are actually running in the background, but this is certainly a possible scenario. And if we are sending an ordered broadcast, they can even abort it. And this is also the reason why we use the package name for our action strings, because the namespace for these intent actions is global, and by using our own package name, we avoid conflicts with other apps. Now instead of sending this broadcast to everyone, we already learned that we can Limit the scope by specifying a package name, so only a particular app is allowed to receive this broadcast. Or we can make the broadcast completely explicit and only specify a single broadcast receiver that is allowed to receive our broadcast. We learned about explicit broadcasts in more detail in part 4, so if you need a refresher, go ahead and watch this part again. On the receiving side, we have similar problems. When we register a receiver dynamically with an intent filter, other apps can send a broadcast with the same action. And there's nothing really here we can do to limit the scope. If we only want to send and receive implicit broadcasts within our own app, we should use another class which is called Local Broadcast Manager, but we will learn about this in the next part and focus on normal broadcasts in this video. For statically registered broadcast receivers in the manifest, we can limit the scope to the own app by setting exported to false. Now this can't be triggered by anyone outside of the app. But if we don't set exported to false, everyone can explicitly trigger this broadcast receiver even if we have an intent filter. Other apps can still say, okay, I want to call ordered receiver 2 directly with an explicit intent and the action string doesn't matter. But if we want to keep our broadcasts and broadcast receivers open to the whole system and send and receive broadcasts from anywhere, we can still add a security layer by specifying permissions. And this is the main focus of this video. Senders and receivers can both specify permissions that then the other app has to hold. And this can be a bit confusing because there are different places where we have to specify and request these permissions. But we will go through all the use cases step by step, so don't worry. To add a permission to a statically registered broadcast receiver, we go into the receiver tag and specify the Android colon permission attribute. And one option is just to use the system permissions that we already have and know. For example, Android dot permission dot internet, which makes sense if the use case for our broadcast receiver fits into that bucket. In this example, the particular permission doesn't actually mean anything, it's just for presentational purposes. But instead of using the system permissions, we can also create our very own ones. For this, we go to the top in our manifest file above the application tag and write opening angle bracket permission. Not uses permission, but permission. And then we have to give it the name. Again, we have to use our package name, because otherwise there can be conflicts. If an app tries to create a permission with the same name that another app already used, then the system actually doesn't allow it to install our app. So we have to make sure that the name of our permission is unique. So we use our package name. I will skip the broadcast example and just add the name here directly. For example, custom underscore permission. And then we close this. And this permission will be registered when we install this app. And then the same as the internet permission we used, we can add it to a broadcast receiver. Let's do it for ordered receiver 3. Permission. And we add the same name. Com.codinginflow.custom permission. So now our sender app needs our custom permission to be able to send a broadcast to our ordered receiver 3. And it needs internet permission to send to ordered receiver 2. And this custom permission gets created when we install this app. 
There are also some more attributes you can add to this permission tag. For example, the protection level. You can also make this a dangerous permission, which means that this permission has to be requested at runtime. You should use this if your broadcast receiver needs a higher protection level, which the user has to be aware of. And of course you can also use predefined dangerous system permissions. And if you want to know how to request a dangerous permission at runtime, I will put a video on that into the info card box in the top right corner. Another option is to pass signature here, which means that only apps that are signed with the same key can use it. This is useful if we want to limit this functionality to multiple of our own apps, but keep it unavailable for other apps. Besides that, you can also add stuff like a description, an icon or a label, but we will leave it out here and just specify the name. Okay, so now we added two permissions and now let's take a look into our main activity again and also add the permission to our dynamically registered broadcast receiver, which is ordered receiver one. And to this register receiver method, we can add the permission as another argument, comma, after the filter, we can either pass the string directly or use one of the constants with manifest.permission. And this time let's just use write rate. But then we also have to pass a fourth argument, which is a handler. We only need this if we want to run this broadcast receiver on another thread than the main thread. But we don't want to do this, so we simply pass null. Which means that our broadcast receiver will just keep running on the main thread. Okay, now let's run both apps and see what happens. So we still send our ordered broadcast, which means that from the toast message we should be able to see exactly which receiver we trigger. And we added permissions to ordered receiver 1, 2 and 3, without requesting these permissions in our sender app. So now we should not trigger these receivers. Let's test it. And we can see start sender receiver. So our ordered broadcast starts and immediately comes back to our sender receiver, because we added these permissions to all the three receivers in between. Which means that now, in our sender app, we have to go into the manifest file and request these permissions the same as we do it when we for example request a normal internet permission. We have to write uses permission and specify this permission. Let's start with vibrate. This is the one we used in ordered receiver one. And let's only add this one and test our app. So let's test it. Start OR1 and our sender receiver. So now we are able to send a broadcast to ordered receiver 1, but we still skip OR2 and 3, which makes sense because we only requested the vibrate permission. Now let's add the second one. In ordered receiver 2, we use the internet permission, so let's add this one as well. And now important in the ordered receiver 2, we still abort our broadcast here, so of course we have to comment this out. And now let's test it again. Send broadcast, start OR2, which comes before OR1 with a higher priority, OR1, send a receiver. And now we only have to add the permission for OR3, which was our own custom permission. But adding it works exactly the same, uses permission, and then we add our string, com.coding in flow custom permission. And now we should be able to trigger all our receivers. Again, send broadcast, start OR3. OR2, OR1, and send a receiver. So everything works again as in the last video where we had no permissions at all, because we request all the permissions in our sender app that our broadcast receivers in the other app request. Now let's see how we can do the same when we send the broadcast. So again into our main activity of the sender app. We do this of course in our send method. And in the last video we already saw this receiver permission argument where we passed null. And this time we simply want to pass a permission again. Manifest.permission. Let's this time choose way clock. But again, this doesn't actually mean anything here, it's just for presentational purposes. In a real app, you should use whatever permission fits to the particular use case. And with the security level, that makes sense. And of course, the normal set broadcast method can also take a receiver permission. As you can see here, if you want to use this method, just add the permission as a second argument. The same as we added it in our send ordered broadcast method. And now when we run it again, our ordered receiver 1, 2 and 3 should all not receive this broadcast, because the other app doesn't have our wake lock permission, which now the sender app requires. So let's test it. And we are back at start and sender receiver. And now we have to do the same in our broadcast receiving app, as we did before in our sender app. 
we have to request this permission with use this permission and we need the wake lock permission and that's it. This time we only have to add one permission because we only request one permission in our sender method. Let's run it again. And now it should work as before with all our three ordered receivers receiving the broadcast. And there it is. OR3, 2 and 1. So this can be confusing because we have to specify these permissions in different places. But just remember, no matter where we request the permission, the app that actually wants to use this permission to communicate with our sender or receiver has to request it with the uses permission tag in its manifest file. So if our sender requires a permission, the receiving app has to add the uses permission tag. And if our receivers require a permission, the sending app has to add this permission with the uses permission attribute. So there's always at least one site that has to add the uses permission attribute. Just keep that in mind. Okay, again, as usual, if this confuses you, take a look into the description box because there is a link to the example code snippets. And in the next video, we will learn about the local broadcast manager. So make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss that. And if this video is helpful, please leave a like. Take care.